Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauberlab and today will be another video about Oracle Cloud. In this video I will show how you can install OpenVPN. And that you when I ask me, Alan, why you want to show how to install OpenVPN if in the last video you show how to install WireGuard. And the answer is really easy. Why we need to be blocking only one application. In this way you have a multiple choice and that you can decide. WireGuard is famous for a fast speed but OpenVPN is fast for safety. So you need to decide what you're gonna compromise, if you want more safe or you want more speed. In this way, we're gonna show another option that you can use and with this other option, you can check if it's worth for application or not. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to subscribe for the channel, leave your comment, leave your like, of course, and let's do it. Before I start to install an application, let's explain what is OpenVPN. So I come in the website for OpenVPN and this logo for this website is Secret Access. You have different options, you, need, you can pay for this application or you can have a free option. In our case, we're gonna go for a free option. If I go in the website, I can see some brands that they use and it's partnered to the OpenVPN as Amazon, Google, and others that uh, I'm not so aware about it, but uh, I believe that they are quite big, otherwise you're not put in the website. So other thing that's interesting for this one, if I come here, VPN client and open VPN connection, I have different platforms that I can install. I can install in this client for Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, and iOS. It means that it will cover most of the applications. If you want to install in a router or you want to install in different things, you need to look for this specific system and see if it is capable or able to do it. I know that some of the routers you can set up something, but I'm not so sure about it. I have this one in mind, now we're gonna look for which system that I'm going to install. If I open my Oracle Cloud in my virtual machine, I know that I'm using a virtual machine who has installed Ubuntu server. I use only one core, one gigabyte of run, and a 408 megabps of speed bandwidth. So it's not the fastest option, but it's still able to do. And if you need a little bit fast option, yes, you always have an option to use ARM system, that Ampere, where you can use four cores, you can use 24 gigabyte of run and four gigabps of bandwidth. But in our case, we only want to test the basic option to see how fast and how efficient they will work. Of course, depending on your application, you're gonna need more or less, but at least you have an overview and understand how it's work. Other thing that we need to have is to have the virtual cloud with our port forwarding tracked for the 1194. So if I open here, I'll open my subnet and I'll open my default security. I need to set up port 1194. So if I can uh, here end it, I need to set up 0.0.0.0. .0. That it means that all the computer, all the instance that's connected for this system will be able to use the same uh, role. The protocol that I'm using is UDP. Don't try to do TCP unless that you set up there to be able to use TCP, otherwise not connect. And the port will be 1194. I put a name OpenVPN because I'm using for OpenVPN, but you don't need to choose exactly the same name. Have this one in mind, we're gonna save it, we come here in our instance and that's, we're gonna access it. To access, you have a lot of options, you can use directly in the SMD for the Windows, but in my case, I prefer to use the PuTTY, so I will open this program and that's, I will show what I configured for you. Have put open, I'm using my user as a Ubuntu, exactly the same user, and my IP address is exactly the same for the machine that I'm using. Other thing that it's important for you to know is that I use my key in the Arthur. If you don't set up your key, they will not allow you to do, but in this video, I'll not show how you set up this private key because in the previous video where I show how you set up your uh, Oracle Cloud, I show how you can set up this key. So now I can come here and put open. First time that you try to open it, they say that you need to download the key. So I put yes and it will open the page. Have my system open, as this system is just installed, don't have anything, I'm using only 3.7% of all my capacity. 
first thing that we needed to do is to enter as a root. I'm enter as a root to avoid that I have any problem in the future, so it's much easier for me. So we'll put sudo so. Now we need to update and upgrade our system. To update our system, it's really easy. It's apt get update, and that's it. we're gonna update our list. This list is only to guarantee that all the application is looking for the correctly place. And after this list is ready, we're gonna do the upgrade for our system. This upgrade will be to cover all the programs that should be in update before we run an installation. So let's wait now. So now that we update our list, we're gonna do upgrade of all application, upgrade, and we run it. This upgrade will take a little bit longer. Don't forget to put yes and wait it. Now we will take a little bit longer and that once this one finish, we're gonna start to do now installation. So let's wait. Wonderful. Once that our system has been updated, now we can clear our page. Now we can start our installation. To do the installation would be really simple. We can use core space slash l https install pyvpn dot yo slash bash. So now we can run this uh, this script. First page that we're going to show for us it's uh, pyvpn automated install. This installation will transform your Raspberry Pi into an OpenVPN or WarningGuard server. And you're gonna ask, Alan, I'm not running a Raspberry Pi. Why I should use this script? It's simple, because we work really well and will be really light and will not have problem at all. If they are made for Raspberry Pi and you're using or any other platform will work as well. So why not to use it? The other option that you can do is to install a Docker in this uh, virtual machine, and that's uh, from the Docker you need to install uh, OpenVPN, and that's uh, you need to install all these applications and to avoid everything and only to be one easy application for you, you can run only this script. Now we're gonna put, okay? Now they tell you that it's needed to have a static IP, and they say, yes, it's wonderful, exactly what I have in my Oracle Cloud. This because my Oracle Cloud allowed that my IP will never change unless that I delete my instance and create another one. Otherwise, I will keep my IP address forever. I can come, okay? And they say, you are sure about it? They say, yes, I'm sure about it. Now they say, now you need to decide which user that you want to use. In my case, I want to use Ubuntu because I'm using Ubuntu server. If I'm using a Linux server, I will decide to use OPC. But if I put OPC at this stage and that I'm using Ubuntu will not work and vice versa. So we're gonna use Ubuntu and put enter. And now they ask which kind of application that you want to install. If you follow my last video, I decided to go for WarningGuard. This time I go for OpenVPN because it's a little bit different how to install and how to set up it in your device. So it's important for you to know. So I come here, OpenVPN, put a space. Remember, a space for the find another option and that enter to install it. So now enter. You want to define extra information or you want to install as a default? In my case, I will install it as the default, but why they show this option? If you want to set up a UDP or TCP connection, you can modify it if you put yes. As well, you can set up the mode of encryption. As a standard, they come with 256 bits plus TSL certification, but you can increase it. You can put up to 1056 or something look like it, if I'm not wrong. And uh, this encryption will be more safe, but it will use more for your computer or more for your virtual machine. So you need to decide what balance that it's worth for you. In my case, 256, I think that will be okay. If I'm not wrong, maybe I'm correcting me. Uh, I believe that 256 bits for B broken by brute force will take around one trillion years or something look like it. So I feel totally safe to use this kind of configuration because it will take really long time until I feel that uh, everyone can break this key. So I can come here and put no. And now it's the port that we need to define. Remember that I told you that you need to set up the port 1194 UDP. Yes, because if you set up there before to be TCP, you need to move the port configurations. As well, if you want to set up a different port, you need to set up here as well. If you want to change in the future, yes, you can run exactly the same script and that's reconfigurate it. But remember, if you don't need it to change, if you don't write a reason properly for change from port 1194, don't change, please. Keep it simple. And that's you're gonna ask me again, Alan, 
yeah, everyone know that this port will be used for OpenVPN. Why we really leave this one? And I say, yes, everyone you know, but without your key and your configuration, not be able to access it. And if someone is targeting your IP, they always can do a full scan and see which port it's open, so not make any difference at all. So leave the standard one. If you don't need, leave the standard, it's easy. So we're gonna put okay. And they say, you set up correctly? Yes, I set up correct. So yes, again. Now it's the time of the DNS. Remember, if I come here for Pi VPN is a local DNS, it means that they will look for any local DNS. And this local DNS could be your Pi hole that you set up. But if you come here, Pi hole, it's a local. You do if you want to do a Pi hole. Otherwise, in my case, I will put as a cloud fair and I will put Kenta. In my case, I'm using Oracle instance that will not change my IP address. So for me, it's totally fine. But in your case that you, you don't want to choose Oracle Cloud and you want to choose any other VPS or your network or anything and your IP could potentially change. So I suggest you to go for DNS entry. So you can configure a Docker DNS, you can configure Cloudflare, no IP and any other application that will track your IP will be a dynamic DNS program. For any reason, your IP change, your open VPN will not work anymore. Imagine that you're not physical there and you cannot set up it again. So all your configuration will be lost and that is not interesting. So considering this one before you choose it. But in my case, I would choose the standard one because I know that my IP address will not change. So it's totally fine, I put enter. And that's uh, now they say that uh, our key will be generated. So we can come here, okay. It's almost finished our installation, but before it, they say, you can set up an unattended upgrade. It's interesting to set up it because if you, any upgrade come for the Linux, your system will be upgraded and that your risk of uh, invasion or anything will be low. But anyway, they say that they will not restart it automatically. So if you need to set up it, I suggest you to set up a step to restart once a month or you physically there to set up once a month. You guys don't know how to do it. Please let me know that I will show how you can set up some activity or some jobs look like once a week they restart the computer, once a month they restart the computer. It's quite easy, but if you don't know, I can show how to do it. So I come here, okay, and I say yes, I want you to do it. They say, if you want to add a new user, you can come here and say PyVPN add. So really easy. And then we come here and okay. Now they suggest you to restart your computer. In my case, I'm not restart because I will only run this application and it will be totally fine. But please, restart your computer. Go there and restart now. So now I put no in my case. And our OpenVPN has been installed. What's the next step? It's really easy. We're going to create our user. So it'll be PyVPN add. Now we need to define the name. The name of my user will be Sauber, Sauber, Sauber Lab, exactly. Sauber Lab. Now, how many days that should be expired this certification? If you are really concerned and you want that he expire each 10 days, 20 days, it's fine. In my case, I will leave the standard one that's 1080. That will be a long time. And, and in this time, I can recreate my system. So I'll put, okay, you set up the password. This password will be used for when you want to set up in your device. So don't forget this password. Don't need to be a really strong one because this will not be the encryption key will be only the password that you're gonna use to access you, this user, but you don't put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because it's too easy and too basic. So I will put here my password. And now I put again my password. And wonderful, my user has been created. If I see here, they save my user in exactly this location. So now I can look for this key that's a day generate. I can come here in this location and put CD and exactly the same location that they told me. And I put LS A. And now I know that in this location I have this file. So let's clear again and do exactly the same. This location I have the file cyberlab.ovpn. Now I can set up my user, but uh, to set up my user, I needed to have this this configuration with me, otherwise I will not be able to set up it. And the configuration that we did, we needed to have the configuration key, otherwise it will not work at all. You cannot only put your IP address because it will not work, basically. So what is the best option? You have two of those. First of all, you can create a FTP server, you can connect for your FTP and you can download it, or you can do it the wrong way, but the easiest way. Let's access this one 
copy all the configuration and that's how we can save our computer to do it it is a nano and that's I copy exactly the same configuration here and I paste and I open here it's all my configuration that I want to copy but uh, it's too small so let's come here change setup I appearance and I will decide the smallest letter that I have and okay and now appear everything you guys cannot read it because it's really small but here it's all my configuration my client my begin of certification the end of certification and my other certification so everything it's here I'll come here and I copy more or less until here because it's fine in my notepad I come here and paste and then I come here I go until the end and I copy it again come here in my notepad and I paste it so now I can save it, I put save S and I will define as a cyber So I define as a cyber lab point VPN and that I will put save. Now I can open my application for open VPN. If I told you before, if I come here, come in my open VPN, I can download for Windows, I can do the installations really easy. And that once that I installed, I can have access for this application. In the application, we have this page. If I try to use the URL, will work? No, because it's a different way of installation and you need to have a file. So I come here in my file, browse it, and I open my CyberLab browser that I did. So I can put save private key and I already put my password that I used before and I can come here and connect. I know that it's working because my byte in and byte out is showing something. So they are send information, receive information. Now is the time to see how good or how bad this will work. How we can do it? We can use the speed test. So first thing I would disconnect this configuration and that I will open the speed test and test my internet without any configuration. After this one, I will test my internet with this VPN open and see what's the difference. So let's try to do it. So my speed without the VPN will be 10 milliseconds for ping. I have a 609 for download and 710 for upload. Now we're gonna test the speed if I am using the open VPN. So let's test it. With my open VPN open, if I come here, I already showed that I'm using the Oracle server. My IP address will be exactly the same as my instance, and so I can go and start my test. With the OpenVPN enable, I will have a reduce of speed, so my pin will be increased for 17 milliseconds, as well my speed download reduced for 600, 700 to 445, and the same thing for my upload. So I'll put the both tests in the same page so you guys can have an idea. In my left side, I have my internet without any VPN enable, and my right one have the VPN enable. Yes, have a reduction of speed, I agree with it, but depend on what you need. If 45 megabytes of download and 30 megabytes of upload will be fine for you, so you don't need to make any more powerful machine. But if it's not enough, yes, then you need to look for other options. The other option that you're gonna have will be the Ampere system where they dedicate four cores for you, 24 gigabytes of run and four gigabps of um, bandwidth. So depend what your application. For me, if I'm using Wi-Fi in the street, would be totally fine. I will never need more than 45. But if you need some specific application, yes, maybe will be not enough for it. So guys, I hope that you like this video. In this way, you know how to install others options, not necessarily only the wiring guard, but as well the open VPN. Uh, this open VPN is not one of the fastest one. I will try to make a video in the future where I will compare what's the speed between the wiring guard and open VPN and see which one that uh, show you a better performance. Open VPN is focused for security, wiring guard is focused for speed. Two different ways that they are falling, but both will work as a VPN really good. So depend what kind of application that you need and what kind of speed that you need that will just find which application that you can install. If you like this video and think that it was useful, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel. And see you next time. Bye.